renowned as Sheikh Al Akbar, meaning the greatest master in the Muslim world, Hazrat Sheikh Muhyiddin Ibn Al Arabi was an influential Andalusian Sufi mystic, philosopher, poet, and spiritual teacher. Born on July 28, 1165, in Murcia, Spain, Ibn Arabi provided a far-reaching understanding of Islam and spiritual masters worldwide through his teachings and writings. Ibn Arabi wrote over 350 works on spirituality as well as some fine poetry in the Arabic language. He shows how the perfect man is the complete image of God and by knowing one's essential self, one knows God. Commenting on Sheikh Ibn Arabi, Dr. William C. Chitik, Professor of Religious Studies at the State University of New York said, In the Islamic world, probably no one has exercised deeper influence over the intellectual life of the community over the past 700 years. From the age of eight, Ibn Arabi lived in Seville with his family. Around the age of 16, Ibn Arabi had his first vision of God and entered into a retreat during which he had several visions of Lord Jesus Christ, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Moses. He referred to this experience as his first guide to the path of God. His father then took him to visit his famous philosopher friend, Averroes. During their conversation, Sheikh Ibn Arabi explained the limits of rational perception. Young Sheikh Ibn Arabi embarked on a study of the Quran in earnest under the instruction of his first spiritual master, Al-Urabi. He was friends with many male and female spiritual teachers whom he later wrote about in Ruh al or Epistle of the Spirit of Holiness. He gave accounts of his mystical experiences and revelations which included his meetings with al khidr the immortal guide who imparts hidden mysteries. Sheikh Ibn Arabi became a fully-fledged Sufi when he was 20. During a house party of an important civilian leader, Sheikh Ibn Arabi left early to wander the outskirts of the city. He found a cemetery and meditated there for four days, after which he was immensely blessed with the knowledge of several disciplines. He then spent 14 months in retreat under the guidance of his master, Sheikh Yusuf bin Yuklaf al Komi. During this period, Ibn Arabi received secret revelations from the Divine. Sheikh Ibn Arabi stated, قد كانت خلوتي من الفجر. وكان فتحي قبل طلوع الشمس ولازمت مكاني أربعة عشر شهرا وحصل لي بذلك الإسراء الذي ألفته بعد الفتح وكان فتحي جذبة في تلك اللحظة Around the age of 30, Sheikh Ibn Arabi traveled to Tunis where he was asked to write the book on Sufi saints of Andalus, Ruh al -Quds. The biography tells of 55 Andalusian Sufis he had interacted closely with. He stayed in Tunis for a year before returning to Seville. During his stay in Tunis, he entered the Earth of Reality, a spiritual realm in which the real adoration of God takes place. Upon his return to Seville, his writing career began with the Mashahid al-Asrar, or contemplation of the holy mysteries. Following the passing of his parents in 1194, Sheikh Ibn Arabi traveled to Fez, Morocco with his two sisters. During his stay in Fez, he experienced a powerful spiritual elevation, which he described in his book Kitab al-Asra, or Book of the Night Journey. اكتسبت خلال هذا الإسراء المعاني الحقيقية لجميع الأسماء الإلهية ورأيت أنها تشير جميعها إلى اسم واحد وإلى حقيقة أساسية واحدة هذا المسمى الواحد كان هدفي للتأمل تلك الحقيقة الواحدة كانت كينونتي After studying the Islamic sciences, 
with several teachers in Andalus and North Africa, Sheikh Ibn Arabi went on a pilgrimage to Mecca in 1200. During his three years stay there, he began writing the monumental Al Futuhat Al Makkiya or the Meccan Illuminations, a 37 volume project containing a complete clarification of the Quran and the way of Islam. He then traveled through Iraq and Anatolia, settling down in Damascus in 1223. Here he concentrated on his writings and training his disciples, one of whom was Sadruddin al Ghunavi, who went on to become the interpreter of Sheikh Ibn Arabi's teachings. Sheikh Ibn Arabi explained the perfect being through the philosophical metaphor of the mirror. He compared an object being reflected in mirrors to the relationship between God and His creations. Humans are mere reflections of God, therefore there is no separation between the two. The person who understands and walks on this path of oneness pursues self-consciousness and self-realization. According to Sheikh Ibn Arabi, a person acquires divine knowledge which is the primordial spirit of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, through self-manifestation. He calls this person an isthmus between heaven and earth. He is the perfect human through whom God's presence can be realized by others. Let's take a moment to appreciate the wonders surrounding us and give thanks to the Divine. We'll be right back here a Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Sheikh Ibn Arabi, vegetarian, great mystical genius of the Arabs. Sheikh Ibn Arabi maintained that by knowing the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, one knows God. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the best proof of God, a perfect being exemplifying morality and a role model for human beings to emulate. Other perfect beings such as Moses, Lord Jesus Christ, Abraham and Noah were mentioned in the doctrine of the perfect human Al-Insan Al-Kamil or the complete person. A vegetarian Sheikh Ibn Arabi also emphasized the need to respect animals and plants as God's creations. He taught that food should come from a source that does not harm any creature. In the manuscript, the Absolute Retreat, he wrote, ما يهم في هذه الخلوة وبعض الخلوات ألا تقتل حيوانا أصلا لا قملة ولا غيرها فإذا خفت من الهوان في رأسك فاحلق. After he arrived in Mecca, in 1202, Sheikh Ibn Arabi began writing his largest work, the Meccan Illuminations, which took almost 30 years to complete. Originally in 37 volumes with 560 chapters, it is a compendium of spiritual anthropology, psychology, cosmology and metaphysics. It discusses topics ranging from mystical philosophy to Sufi practices, as well as records of his visions and dreams. He bequeathed this work to his son. The second draft started two years before his passing, included deletions and additions, and is the most widely used. He bequeathed this version to his stepson and most influential disciple, Sa'd ad-Din al kunabi The ring stones of wisdom, or Fusus al-Hakim, considered to be the essence of Sheikh Ibn Arabi's spiritual teaching, was composed during the latter part of his life. It contains 27 chapters which summarize his teachings and beliefs that resulted from a great vision of all the prophets from Adam to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that he received in 1190 in Cordoba, he wrote, Harry Corbin, 
philosopher, author, and professor of Islamic studies, described Ibn Arabi as un de ces rares et puissants individus spirituels qui sont la norme de leur propre orthodoxie et de leur propre temps parce qu'ils n'appartiennent ni à ce qu'on appelle communément leur temps ni à l'orthodoxie de leur temps. Turjaman al-Ashfar, or the interpreter of yearnings, is a short collection of poetry inspired by Sheikh Ibn Arabi's meeting with Nizam, the beautiful and gifted daughter of a great scholar during his first pilgrimage to Mecca. This was the first of his works to be translated into English. Sheikh Ibn Arabi's writings are largely connected with divine reality and human beings' experience of it. He emphasized that the ideas he communicated were not a personal matter. فيما كنت قد كتبت لم يكن لدي أبدا هدفا محددا مثل الكتاب الآخرين إنما كانت ومضات من الإلهام الإلهي تهب علي وتغمرني تقريبا أمكنني إخراجها من ذهني فقط من خلال الالتزام بكتابة ما كشفوه لي بعض الأعمال التي كتبتها بأمر من الله أرسلت إلي وأنا نائم أو من خلال الإلهام القلبي In 1977, the Mohyuddin Ibn Arabi Society was established as an international association which promotes an understanding of the work of Sheikh Ibn Arabi and his disciples. The quality and quantity of Sheikh Ibn Arabi's writings distinguished him from other philosophers. His works were meticulously checked and copied in his presence before they were circulated to a wider audience. Indeed, the influence of Sheikh Ibn Arabi's teachings and works has been far-reaching, providing relevant and thoughtful insights that continue to invoke the spirituality of readers today. For more information on Sheikh Ibn Arabi Vegetarian, please visit ebnarabisociety.org. It's been a great pleasure, gracious viewers, to have your company today.